Well, I want to thank everybody for for tuning in, dedicating some of your Tuesday night to this conversation, to this thing that we got going on here. Whistle Kick Live. I enjoy doing this show. It's a lot of fun for me. And I hope that you will participate. I've got the chat up over here. And I'm I'm watching. I'm seeing what everybody's saying. Honestly, I, I really don't even care about the video. I just care about what everybody's saying. So uh, if you have something to say, if you have something to respond to, we're going to get into some of these topics. We got we got a whole bunch of stuff over here that you can't see. But I uh, want to shout out Gabe, producer for Whistlekick Live, for all that he does, all the things that he's got prepped for me. And uh, let's let's get into it. Let's see how it goes. Now, we... We've got a title for for this, the ninth installment. Believe it or not, this is the ninth month we've done this show. And it's called We Have More That Binds Us Than Divides Us. And I don't know if he meant it this way, but that's something I'm fond of saying about the martial arts is that it doesn't matter what you train in and what somebody else trains in. There is far more that you have in common than you don't. There's more that binds you than divides you. And this is not a political show. I do not do anything to do with politics. I won't even talk about politics, but it seems like an appropriate reminder for where we're at in the world. We have more that binds us than divides us. Now, of course, you may have noticed that I introduced this show as Whistlekick Live. And why did I do that? Because it is not martial arts radio anymore. We have kind of spun this off and do its own thing. It is Whistlekick Live. And here's the logo. And uh, again, shout out to Gabe for coming up with this logo. And uh, I dig it. I dig it. I think it's fun. Simple. Nothing wrong with simple, but fun. We like fun, right? And uh, yeah, it should be working a lot better now. I've got, I'm, I'm, I'm learning, right? This is like anything else. You, you got to do something a bunch of times to figure it out. And we're figuring it out, figuring it out. You know, we're still running in high def, but not 1080p like I had wanted to. Let's see, what happens if I put it back to 1080? We'll be okay with that? We'll see what happens. If I have to turn it back to 720, we'll turn it back to 720. So we've got this new logo, this new branding, and uh, we're going to continue to run the audio of this as an episode of Martial Arts Radio, but... You know, it's it's grown into its own thing. So we wanted to give it its own space, its own name. Now we're going to start off, we're going to talk about martial arts in the news. And this is a segment that we're going to try to add in and we're going to need your help. So if you see a news story, especially if you're part of a news story, something going on in your school, your area related to martial arts, we want to feature it. We want to start bringing some more positive energy to the martial arts and to this show. Uh, if you are a reader of Marshall Journal, then you know that former editor Scott Bolin for a while did a, a recurring roundup of positive news stories. And I miss it. It was a lot of work for him. And I hope Scott's well. I haven't talked to him in a little while. Actually, I got to catch up with that guy. He's a good guy. But maybe we can implement some of that here. So if you have a story that you want to submit, you know, go ahead, send that over to us. You know, just let us know somewhere that it's for Whistlekick Live. Eventually, we'll get a separate email address for this and, and everything. But let's face it, if we do separate email addresses, it's just more things I got to check. You email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. I'll get it. We'll use it. And uh, like last month, the show should probably be sponsored by Spindrift because I drink like four of them a day. Good times. Good stuff. And now we're doing, we're doing something a little bit new, a little bit different in the way that we're going to handle media for this show. This is a media-heavy show. We, we do a lot of things. We try to drive you all to the pictures, the video that we've got. There we go. All right, figuring this stuff out. And so what we've got here uh, is the White Tiger Martial Arts Dojang in Minneapolis, Minnesota. They have been holding classes in a local park for their Haidong Gumdo Korean sword style. And we've got a few pictures of that. I, I really dig the, the face on the older gentleman in the background. He looks like he's about to run that sword through that kid. And I, I don't train Gumdo, but I'm either, either the woman in the foreground is that BA that 
she doesn't even have to pay attention to that guy behind her or or maybe there's something else going on that I'm not quite following. Maybe maybe that's not a partner drill. In fact, as I'm looking around at the others, uh, maybe that isn't a partner drill. Um but you know what? Go back. Pretend these are all partner drills. That that older gentleman's going to kill that kid. That woman is indifferent to the guy in blue, which must make him feel great about life. And then, is that the same guy? I think that's the same guy. He's going to take it out on this this guy with the brown belt who needs to tie his belt, but I think we've all been there. And he's going to take revenge and stab that guy in the back. <laughs> oh, good times. Oh man. <laughs> There's more, but I, I wanted I wanted to come back and, and uh say, oh zoom out. Hold on. What are we doing? Man, I need like an extra keyboard and at least another monitor to do this. Andrew says that if he was sponsored by a drink, it would be Dr. Pepper. <laughs> oh. So I got my laptop here. I got a screen here. I got a screen here. And uh, you know what I actually have down here is I have a new computer that I might be transitioning over to that would support up to, to I think we can do five screens off of that. And it, it does have the horsepower to run it. So we'll see how that goes. And there we go. And we had one more bit of news that we were going to do here. So let's go back. To that. I'm going to not full screen that because it makes it a little bit easier for me. There we go. Family Martial Arts Academy. This is their logo. In lieu of the stay at home order, the Family Martial Arts Academy in Fayetteville, North Carolina, was hosting online classes and actually saw an increase in attendance. And I want to shout them out. I want to shout out a number of schools. Well, I'm, I'm not going to shout them out because I'm not going to name them because I don't know if they want me to name them. But I know of a number of martial arts schools that saw either a level amount of attendance, maybe a slight drop, or even an increase like these folks did because they really hit it hard. They made sure that they were delivering so much value that it was impossible for people to ignore. As a result of the increase, they decided to hold an online summer camp. Instructor Tracy Huff said, I knew we had to do something because not everyone was comfortable coming in and some families had older people in their home, so they wanted to be extra cautious. She also said, I call and tell my students, you have to put on your black belt mind, Huff said. Black belt minds just don't quit. I like that. You know, we, we've talked in pretty much every aspect of Whistlekick about the the black belt mindset, the idea of of what that means. And and I hope anyone who trains in something that doesn't use uh that conventional Eastern um ranking system doesn't take offense at me saying that because I recognize not everybody does rank that way. But I think you know what I mean. You know, we think about uh we think about the black belt mind, the the attitude that a black belt would have. And they don't quit. If anybody's expecting that this show is suddenly going to become overly professional and I'm not going to, you know, half sneeze on camera and drink a can of seltzer, then you're watching the wrong show. Tommy in the chat says, we only had a slight drop and actually have two new families, three students coming up this week to live class because of the online streaming. There we go. There we go. I, you know, this is certainly not Whistlekick's business advice show, but for any of you who saw some success teaching online classes, as you transition back, if you do not have an online component, I think you're, I think you're wrong. I think you're missing the boat. There's something there. There's something there. It doesn't have to be perfect. But it keeps them. It keeps them paying attention. Keep doing it. Have you ever tried practicing a form with ankle or wrist weights? What are some other creative ways of training? 
I used to have some ankle and wrist weights, and I I, I used to wear them around the house, and because somebody told me that if I did that, I would get used to that more gravity, and I would be able to jump higher. And as someone who is smaller in stature, and yet enjoyed basketball, I thought that would help me be able to dunk. I wanted to dunk a basketball. I saw a guy once who was 5'8", dunking a basketball with authority. And it's because he had those crazy jump shoes. The guy had hops. What can I say? He could jump. Other creative ways of training. I mean, there, there's, there's so many. How, how many ways can we train? I mean, it's, it's nearly infinite. Oh, Gabe says that's a typo. That's a shame. I, I enjoyed that spelling. Creative ways of training. I mean, if, if you're looking to add resistance to what you're doing, there are a lot of things you could do. You could put on a heavy backpack. You can wear it on your back. You can wear it on your front. Uh, if you subscribe to the Bill Wallace method of carrying things, you might have a fanny pack, and you could put that on and put some things in it. You could also wear really heavy shoes, or maybe you have ski boots. Try doing your form with ski boots. It's not going to work really easily. You could do it in sand. You can do it in water. You can. I feel like there's a Dr. Seuss book coming out of this. No, none of it rhymes. I think anything that forces you to re-examine how you're moving is a great creative thing that you can do. There I go. Wow, a lot of comments. Spud Webb was mega short and could dunk. Yes, yes, he could. He was a hero of mine as a kid. Laura says, I've had my students balance a cup or book on their heads in forms to help with posture and balance. Absolutely. Summer camps, you fill the cup with, excuse me, you fill the cup with water. Yeah. Forms in a pond or a lake or a pool. How about the ocean with the waves crashing over you, knocking you down? Especially as, as the tide's moving in or out. Uh, in fact, one of the things I really enjoy is training on a beach as the tide is moving in or out and the stability of the sand changes and sometimes rapidly. So you really have to know where your feet are at, where your balance is, and adjust as you go. Not something that you want to do lightly and with, with lots of speed. You want to pay attention to what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> look at the squirrels i just watched iron man 3 the other e evening last week i think it was last week what a great movie and then side by side with uh one of the fun memes that andrea has done anybody who had you know it, it doesn't have to be whistle kick gear it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be gear it could be Anything. I mean, a new uniform. I don't care if it's the cheapest uniform on the planet. The, the, putting on a new uniform, I just, I feel, I feel like a superhero. I'm not going to lie. So is this going to roll over to eight next? Let's see. It appears to be working correctly now. Eventually I'll figure this stuff out. How does hand-to-hand -hand combat differ from self-defense training in the traditional martial arts? Um, where do we go with this one? Now, in, in case anyone doesn't know, I don't prep for this show. I don't. I don't. Because I like the authenticity of coming at you live. I like figuring this stuff out as you're listening to it. It's just part of my personality. Hand-to-hand -hand combat in traditional martial arts is a little bit of a misnomer because outside of competition, what's the scenario you're preparing for? Hand-to-hand -hand combat, to me, means that both of you know it's going to happen. And yeah, I mean, maybe back in the day, we had fights on battlefields, but we don't have that now. So self-defense training, it's pretty different. If, if, we, if we were to change hand-to-hand -hand combat to 
sparring competition, you know, with whatever the different rule set might be, I think anybody would be able to easily say what the difference is. You know, it's not that hard to pick up on that. Wow, I got a lot of windows open. Where does this chat go? There it is. Whew. Frank says, I was going to start a club for pessimists, but no one thought it would work. There we go. Frank chiming in with a joke. Shout out to Frank, who is instrumental in First Cup, the morning show that I do over my first cup of coffee. <laughs> That's a classic Monty Python skit. I I forgot that was in there. That's good stuff. Oh. Monty Python, the Holy Grail is was probably my favorite movie as a, as a teenager. I, I can't even tell you how many dozen times I've seen that movie. Such a great film. Oh, apparently that showed up with no sound. Weird. It came through with sound on my end. We'll do something else with sound and we'll figure out what's going. Oh, you know what? Let's do this. There we go. That would have done it. Hey, what did I tell you? This is amateur hour. This is me figuring it out as we go. I got two screens, I got two computers, I got I got a camera on this goofy tripod thing, I got a mic, I got a mouse, I got notes, I don't need my phone, that's over there, I, 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 got, I got a screwdriver, because I had to assemble the goofy tripod thing, notice that it's not shooting down, at the top of my head, I moved the camera here, instead of up there, I used to sit on top of the monitor, doing what we can. Well, if anybody wants to go back and watch the goofy banana thing, it's a Monty Python sketch. You'll see it. All right. Got this great gif <laughs> titled, uh, what do we call this? Catuera? <laughs> Cat doing that spin on the front boss. Whoa. And what's great about this is the more you watch it, the better it gets. You start to see more and more nuance of this cat being utterly ridiculous. It's, it's, so if anybody's ever done Caboera, you know that uh, doing an in-place cartwheel is an element that, that comes through in Caboera. And it, it, it's handy because it looks like you're going to do a cartwheel, so you're going to move away, but you, you manage to do it in place. And, and I don't know if I can still do them, but I, was, I used to be able to do them, and that's exactly what that cat does. Look. It's an in-place cartwheel. Woo! And then it jumps. It's nuts. Absolutely crazy. My cat doesn't do anything like that. My rabbit used to do some crazy stuff. Uh, he would just be sitting there and jump. And if you watch any, watch people do snowboard tricks out of a half pipe, he would do stuff like that and then just come back down and look at me like I was the weird one. I don't know, man. Rabbits are weird. And then next... This one's going out to any of you who... Love tournaments, compete in tournaments. Maybe I know you from tournaments. Maybe you're on Team Whistlekick, or maybe you are a parent of someone in Team Whistlekick. Whatever it is, don't worry. We'll be back. I am impressed with the participation I've seen for the virtual tournaments. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm a little surprised. I didn't expect those to go as well as they did. There were quite a few of them. Some of them were done at kind of in a no. Uh, uh, Say a, what I thought to be a little bit of a high price, a price that I thought was probably unnecessary. But hey, if the market will bear it, by all means, I'm a, I'm a free market guy. I think we all know that. Speaking of tournaments, should people submit tournament videos if they're worth watching? What we're not going to do is sit here and watch someone do the entirety of their form. Uh, I've learned that form videos don't go well. People don't tend to want to watch them. Now, if somebody has like a cool fight clip, that would be fun. That we would show. If we put together a montage of like the best scoring techniques, and I don't mean best as in that guy got knocked out, because actually I don't like watching that. Uh, but something really impressive, really cool. You know, I think that's fun to watch. 
What is your pre or post tournament routine? Does your post routine differ if you do well or not? And Matt submitted, and, and those of you watching, I would love for you to post over here in the chat your pre post tournament routines. Matt says, pre tournament, I'll walk through the worst, he's using quotes, part of my form. The day of, I like to just walk around, watch other divisions, and stretch. 10 to 20 minutes prior to sparring, I walk away and put on music. As a younger student, post tournament routine used to be going out to eat and talking tournament. Now, how everyone did is indifferent. Judges look for different things that we may or may not focus on in class, but we try to record everything to watch after to critique ourselves. My routines, um, pre competition, leave me alone. I'm going to walk around and listen to music for at least an hour. I'm going to gently warm up. I'm going to visualize my form and I'm going to go. We're going to see what happens. And then after, I'm going to collapse in a heap and probably be useless for another hour because I put everything I have into it and that's how long it takes me to come back to life. Later on, yeah, take me out to eat, feed me way too much sushi or Chinese food, and I'm a happy person. When I was a kid, there was a, always a yogurt involved. My mother always brought a lot of yogurt to tournaments, and she would feed everyone yogurt. If any of you were around back then, you would remember my mother doing that. I'm not sure why it was always yogurt. My, my mother's a fan of yogurt. Other, other tournament pre-post routines I've seen, uh, it really runs the gamut. I mean, I, I, I know people who can step into a ring with no mental or physical preparation and just rock it. And I'm not one of them. I need to get my head right. I think most people need to get their head right. But somehow, not everyone does. And that's weird to me. Hmm. Gabe says, post-tournament, I don't think about my performance at all until the next day when I watch the video and critique myself. Laura says, usually I only have five minutes from when I've been judging to get ready and jump in a ring. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't referee if I'm there competing. If I've paid to compete, I'll jump in a chair when I'm done. But if I'm there to give my best, I can't give my best if I've been sitting in a chair all day. That's a controversial statement. Not plenty of people get offended at that idea. But you know what? What does Jared, this is Jared. Jared from Martial Thoughts Podcast. <laughs> what does get your head right mean to you? Uh, it means that I am going to devote as much of my mental energy as possible to the task at hand. I'm going to be focused. I'm going to be present. I'm going to step into battle. Yes, even, even for forms. To me, I'm stepping into battle. I see my role as a competitor to show the referees the battle that I'm in, that I'm winning, to bring them there. I'm an actor. I'm taking them to that experience. And that requires investing as much of my mental and emotional energy as I can in that um, in that role, in that character that I'm playing. Gabe says he's started becoming one of those people who can jump in without any preparation. Good on you. This is uh, this is Gabe. This is the back of Gabe. For those of you who don't know Gabe Sue, this is what his back and the back of his head looks like. Uh, he has more hair, but if we if we oh. can we zoom in, Gabe, I'm going to pick on you a little bit. Gabe, this is what the back of my head started doing it at about 22, but nobody told me. So you're in good company. Um, I have noticed that among adult black belt men, there are far more without hair than there are with hair. So maybe there's something to that. Maybe, maybe, maybe the further you progress in martial arts as a, as a man, you, you have to lose hair. But that's not at all why Gabe sent this over. 
Belt displays are cool. This one was custom made. What other creative ways can you store or display your rank? And of course, um, Gabe is rocking this whistle kick shirt, which I really appreciate. So ways to display your belts. Jared says bald head is due to extra testosterone. I mean, maybe. Maybe. Maybe that's what's going on. I think it's just because my brain runs so hot that it burned all the hair off. There are a lot of ways to store a belt, right? Um, if you want to display a belt, I've seen belt racks like that. I've seen them uh, wrap up in like a tube. Uh, I've seen people tie them off and hang them, you know, just kind of on like hooks. I've seen people um, roll them and have like a tail coming off of them. So it's... it's um, like a left to right progression of color, you know, kind of like a rainbow. I think it's the best way to describe it. I don't have, what do I have up in, up in the closet behind me? I've got, there's a white belt. There's a brown belt. There's a black belt. There's a blue belt. There's a yellow belt. I forgot because I started I started as a white belt in jujitsu, uh, Kenpo jujitsu, a couple years ago, and so I do have some of those lower rank belts in there. All the rest, any of my other belts are uh, those are somewhere in Maine at my mother's house. Gabe says he's had that bald spot since that thin sorry the thin spot since he was in high school. Tommy says, "Hey, I got hair." <laughs> I, I'm just playing the statistics, man. It's not, I'm not, I'm not poking at anybody. I'm not saying you can't be good if you have hair. Uh, obviously, uh, the vast majority of, of amazing women I know in the martial arts have hair. I know a couple who have some thinning hair, but there doesn't seem to be the correlation over there. So clearly it's not a universal uh, generalization that we we have to... We have to play some numbers in there if we're going to say that. Got this, uh, got another meme in here. Here we go. Boom. <laughs> Chuck Norris. The real reason Waldo is hiding. And I'm going to zoom in on that a little bit. Now, here's the thing. I don't know if Waldo is actually in this one. And the resolution's not quite good enough for us to really zoom in. I don't know if anybody else really enjoyed those Where's Waldo books. I reluctantly did. Oh, pardon. I think I hated them until I found him. And what I find fascinating is it shouldn't be that hard. Right? You look at this. How many people are in this picture? Not that many. A couple hundred? 300? Shouldn't be that hard to go one by one and, and look at them. But it is. Can you imagine drawing something like that? That would drive me insane. To draw that many. This might be a, a monthly thing. The Chuck Norris joke of the month. Because who doesn't like a good Chuck Norris joke? We all do. They're the best. Frank says, I'm balding too. You may have never seen a picture of me. Frank, I don't think I have seen a picture of you. At least not a close-up one. I'm wearing... Can you see it? Can you see it? There we go. Um, this is a whistle cake sweatshirt from years ago it's the only like thin sweatshirt we ever made and it's not available on the website because i don't think that the companies that we're working with do this kind of sweatshirt but it's fun i enjoy this and actually we do have here i'll show you the back if you like that design that design's available the color is different but that design's available Right now, I think we called it the uh, the throwing it back because this was the first uh, graphic that we did that sold well at events. 
So it holds a special place for me. Oh, that's why I'm thrown off there. Okay. Chuck Norris laughed so hard at the January Chuck Norris joke of the month that we now have 12 months. Good stuff. All right. Um, we did that. Apparently, I'm supposed to talk about this. Okay. The Whistle Kick Strength and Conditioning Program. So, the Strength and Conditioning Program is out. I released... Uh, I updated it today. Version 1.02 is out. And it just keeps getting better. Price keeps going up a little bit. Keeps getting better. And yeah. If you want the most effective, inexpensive, at home, no equipment needed way to get stronger, this is it. It, there is there's nothing like this on the market. I'm very proud of the work that we did on this. And you should all check it out. Uh, what are we up to with it? $21.99 for lifetime access? It's a bargain. Is a bargain. That's how, that's my uh that's my 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 main accent coming out. Is a bargain. Go to Madden's and get a bargain. We've got some mainers in the in the chat. They'll they'll appreciate that. Maybe you can... No, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. It's funny, but it's political. So I'm not going to go there. All right. What's next? Maybe someday this show will grow enough that I that I have a producer, that someone will run, quote unquote, run the board, and I can just sit here and react and respond. That would be a lot of fun. I wonder if we could do that. Hmm... Uh, Gabe, I have an idea. Remind me. Remind me about this. I think I've got a way we can do this. I think I've got a way we can do this remotely. Oh. Here's a fun twist on a... Would you rather... Would you rather a training partner who doesn't wash their uniform often enough or wears a fragrance that is too strong? Hmm. I think most of the time I'm going to say I would prefer the fragrance to the stinky uniform. Because most of the time, the fragrance, even, even as strong as it is, is still preferable to the stinky grossness of the person's unwashed grossness. Their funk. I used to train with a guy who smelled like curry when he spat. It was... At first... I thought he had had curry. We were partnered up. This was in a karate class, like my freshman year of college. And and I asked him, I said, did, did you did you have curry for dinner? Said, no, I haven't eaten yet. No. And then I noticed over the next few weeks, whenever I worked with him, he smelled like curry. And I realized it was him. And it went from making me hungry to being really gross and me not eating curry for a while. Jared says he'd take the stink. Gabe would take the fragrance. I want some other votes going on in here. What do you all think? I just, I've smelled some people that were so awful that I, I couldn't think. There, there's, for those of you in BJJ, I... I don't know how you deal with the really gross, smelly people. I just... Argh, argh, can't do it. Rebecca says, curry sticks to everything. Hair, skin, clothes. Depends on the fragrance. Okay. Yeah, there's... I mean... <sighs> smell is so personal. It, it, really, it really is such an individualized thing. 
the, the smells that we like, the smells that we don't like. Laura says, with health, due to health issues, I would take cleanliness. Yeah. You know, just don't be smelly. Wash your uniform, wash your body, put on deodorant. If you're particularly gross, you know, put some body powder on. You know, there, there's, there are ways. There are things that you can do. Do them. Jared says, I played high school football. I'm used to the stink. That makes sense. And don't forget to clip your nails. Yes, always clip your nails. Otherwise, people will bleed. Here's a fun one. Complete this statement. I never expected the martial arts could have helped with blank. I never expected the martial arts could have helped with blank. I feel like I'm playing Cards Against Humanity or Apples to Apples right now. Of course, we're not. I never expected the martial arts could have helped with. And we've got some answers. Some people responded to this. I said, <laughs> learning how to talk to people. And I don't just mean the podcast and this show and First Cup and all the other things that I, that I do. I meant in answering that primarily, if you're in martial arts long enough, you have to learn how to talk to people. You have to learn how to, excuse me, talk to your partner, talk to your instructor. If you are an instructor, you have to learn how to talk to students to talk to their parents. You have to learn how to communicate. Communication is the foundation of everything. And martial arts, in order for it to work, I don't mean be effective, but but for it to work in society, we've got to communicate it. We can't just get by with written release forms and pieces of paper. It's not, it's not enough. Jared says, home decor. I've seen I've seen video of your basement, my friend. I I know what you're talking about. Matt says a good work ethic. I never expected the martial arts could have helped with a good work ethic. Something that I don't think we would think going into it, but on the other side of it, yeah. I think any of us understand Gr gracious confrontation from Gabe. Oh, it sounds like there's a there's a story there. Dove, hope I'm pronouncing your name right, says my migraines as a teenager. Tang Sudo isn't really known for its meditation exercises. Nevertheless, we did enough so that I was able to relax in the middle of a migraine headache and release some of the tension. Oh, that's awesome. You know, I think one of the best things about martial arts and the differences is that we get to look at something like that and say, you know, that makes sense. Even for a school that maybe doesn't prioritize meditation to offer it once in a while to teach people how to do it so it can become part of their toolbox. You know, if we go back to the title of this episode or, or at the very least what I talked about at the beginning, we have more that binds us than divides us. We all need to know how to relax. Maybe meditation isn't for everyone, but I don't think it's bad to know it. <laughs> Laura says bonfire supplies. I never expected the martial arts could have helped with bonfire supplies. Well, Laura and Stacy as the members of Team Smashy Smash put put their their hands, feet, and elbows through quite a bit of hardwood. Well, wood, not hardwood. And uh, yeah, burning it up. <laughs> Martial arts helps with not being grossed out by limbs with extra joints, aka broken bones. Ugh. Gross, man. <laughs> if anybody else has any more answers to that question, I'll, I'll read them as we go. Self-defense lesson of the day. Sometimes it's not about the technique. <laughs> Look how many times she spins going down. That girl's head would have come off her shoulders. Woo! She's spinning. <laughs> I like that. Gifts are fun. 
There we go. Here's a good one. We didn't make this shirt. I don't know where you can get this shirt. I don't think this shirt will be fun, you know, in, in another month or two. But right now, pretty fun idea. If I can land my foot on your face, you are less than six feet away. Um, I don't know that that's true. I can... I can definitely kick people. I mean, if they're not going to move, I can definitely get people who are more than six feet away. This shirt might have been designed by someone who's not a kicker. Let's see, what's what's range for me? Um, I mean, if, I, if I'm not going to really care about the quality of the kick, if I have to care about the quality of the kick, six foot might be might be right. Maybe a little bit more. If I don't care about the quality of the kick, I can probably push it to eight, maybe nine. I don't know if I can get 10. Maybe that's something I'll have to play with. Put down some marks. Now that's nice out. Now that's nice out. We can we can find out. Andrew says, martial arts has helped me with carpentry, aka fixing up my home dojo. Rebecca says, helps my son feel proud of himself. Good stuff. Gabe's encouraging, encouraging me to get the tape measure out. And you know what? Again, maybe this thing will grow and we'll have a, a, a studio and, and camera people. And, and I'll say, hey, uh, somebody grab a tape measure and, and we'll try it live and we'll see. How far away can I actually reach? What's the first thing you want to train when things open up again? Matt says, self-defense drills and throws. Oh, we do have a graphic for that one. I would say sparring. I miss sparring. And I don't mean fast sparring. I mean just throwing techniques while other people are throwing techniques and just that exchange. I miss that. I miss that so much right now. I just want to spar. This goes much longer. I'm just going to... I don't really mean this. This is a joke. I'm going to start instigating fights on the street so I have people to spar with. <laughs> I feel like I'm 25. I really do. There are moments when when physically I I hurt, but I hurt when I was 25. I hurt when I was 15. I keep finding ways to get better. And I think that if you if you approach life that way, if you refuse to to accept this this idea that you have to get worse as you get older. I think there's a lot of power in that. And I think there are a lot of great examples of that. Anybody who's been to a Superfoot seminar knows even in his 70s, Bill could still kick your butt. <laughs> He's amazing. Jared's saying that when you're young, you're sore because you did something. And I expect he's going to when you're old, you hurt when you don't do anything. Yes. Yes. And that's the key. Don't stop. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't stop moving. It's critical. You got to keep moving. We got a ton of material for next time. And as always, Gabe and I are going to connect what worked, what didn't work. Yeah. But as we start to wind down here, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for Thanks for joining. But Bill Wallace isn't human. Okay, that's fair. He is not human. He's, he's superhuman. He's one of the most incredible people I've ever met. And those of you who've had the opportunity to meet him know what I'm talking about. Because he's the best. All right. Now, here's what I'm going to ask for. For those of you watching, listening, now, in the future, whatever. Let's make this show more connective okay so we've got the live aspect we've got people in the chat i want more stuff coming from everyone i want to incorporate your thoughts your photos your videos i want you to send stuff in i want you to email me jeremy at whistlekick lot uh i don't even know my own domain jeremy at whistlekick.com and you can use the subject for live or something like that and just send that stuff in and we'll hold it for next month. It'll be July something. 
What will that date be? First Tuesday of the month. Come on, calendar. Oh, this computer wants to install updates. No, you cannot install updates. July 7th. So we got five weeks. Five weeks until the next one. And in those five weeks, I want you to send me stuff. I want you to send me anything that you think we can use. Let's, you know, we talked at the beginning about the news stuff, the positive vibes. Let's, uh, let's turn this, I, I, don't, I don't want to use the word crowdsourced, but let's, let's make it connective and community-based. Okay, the, the whole of the martial arts community. He was literally the best in the world in his younger days, though. Yes, he was. And a lot of people don't know, Bill Wallace had an exhibition fight last year. And he still crushed it. So, well, I think it's a good point to end. Because it's been an hour. It's nine o'clock. Thank you all for coming by. Thank you for joining me, spending an hour of your evening with me. I really enjoy these shows. It's a lot of fun. And those of you in the chat, you make it that much more fun. Thanks for being here. Thanks for picking on me, for telling me when I screw up and all that. And once again, I want to shout out Gabe for all of his prep work. He does a great job. And I want to thank all of you who answer the questions and, and do all the other things that make this show what it is. Now, if you can't get enough of me live, I'll be back at it on YouTube in just a few hours, 6.30 a.m. Eastern. We do that show every weekday morning different format, different concept. And that's that. So thank you, everyone. I hope you have a great night and I will see you in a few weeks. Bye.